Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to, this is actually season three, I'm not going to keep track of episodes, that's just way too hard, so welcome back, my name is Dr. Kimberly Quinn, and I am here to help people, assist people, be a channel for becoming the boss of your brain, why, because thoughts come first and feelings come second, therefore, taking charge of our thoughts, becoming the boss of our thoughts, changes lives, our thoughts dictate our lives. So today's chat is going to be on teaching the ADHD mind. And so uh, and actually, I was actually inspired by um, an article in ADD Etude, as in capital A, capital D, capital D Etude. And those in the Fast Mind Club, we often do have Etudes, so it makes sense. So I was inspired by an article by Josh and Melinda Boring. I don't mean they're boring. I mean, their last name is B-O-R-I-N-G. So I'm guessing... There must be a couple of spicy badasses because, you know, with, with a last name such as boring, you'd have to, you have to wear it well. Um, okay, so, first of all, it's very important right out of the gate to let students know that it's a team effort. And their article is actually about little kids, and, and uh, as you all know, I teach at the college level. And so it's important to know, I mean, you know, this, it really isn't different, is actually what I'm saying. It's different. Obviously, it's different. The, the context is different, but the dynamics are not different. That is the main thing. The dynamics are the same. So it's important right out of the gate to to let uh, students know that it's a team effort. So sometimes I verbalize that. You know, I have mostly first years, not all, but mostly first years. And they often just have some really not so great learning experiences. And I'm, I'm certainly not intending to put down, you know, high school teachers and middle school teachers, they work hard and it's a hard job. That isn't it. it Maybe perceived bad experiences. I don't know, but they often get a lot of shame around learning and things. And so, um, I often say I'm on, I'm on team Jason or, you know, team Michelle or whatever. And they kind of look at me and say, yeah, you're intelligent. And sometimes they're good with it. Sometimes, uh, not so much. It really takes some work. So to let them know we're not on opposing sides, like we're in a boxing ring, you know, it's not just not how it is. And I tell them, I want all my rock stars to be successful, of course. And now for a little kid, you might have to just uh, let them know it's a team effort more by, you know, your behavior rather than trying to have them process all that. Um, and then, of course, communicating. It's so important to communicate. And I, I, you know, I tell my all of my students, I can't, you know, together we can't fix it if I don't know about it. So, you, you know, it's very important. They tend to get, they get very good very quickly. And the way we do that is to, is to make communicating inviting. So, you know, we're not the big scary teacher or professor um, to make communication inviting. Um, so now back to the Fast Club, fast club members or uh, ADHDers and also neurotypicals, but it's important to captivate the attention of your audience as a teacher, right, or professor and or educator, we could say. And so it might like a contradiction in terms for the ADHDers, of course, but we, we our, our attention can definitely be be grabbed and it's also important number three here is to involve the whole student in the teaching learning process and because and I, I say to my my amazing rock stars when they walk in you know day one that when you walk in it's not just the student who walks in your whole life walks in with you whether you grew up in an urban environment rural, rural environment um, what your birth order is if you're an only child if you're a twin um, if you grew up with one parent or two, a mom and a dad, two dads, two moms, uh, you know, there are all kinds of learning differences, mental health, and then and you, you just broke up with your partner last week or you got dumped last week or whatever. All this stuff walks in with you. Um, never mind if there's addiction in the house or whatever. Um, also, obviously, all the positive experiences and all that goes in. So the whole thing put together, it, the whole student. So the, it's much bigger than who, what it appears when a student walks in the door. That is the point. Also true for the little kids. And then, of course, um, you know, for the ADHD years of the Fast Mind Club, we've got a sweet spot for attention. You know, our, dop our dopamine deprived minds are sort of actively seeking out stimulation most of the day. And so we may be sitting there looking really bored um, because we are distracted by 
Um, maybe it's a really good conversation, actually, but we're looking bored because we're so distracted at the college level. I just, I mean, I'm just so crazy about my rock stars. They're so enthusiastic, so intelligent, and there's such crossfire conversation that it might, might be, we're distracted by so many shiny objects, all these things being, being said. And then we might have that look on because uh, we're searching for a shiny object because we're not stimulated enough. So there's definitely, definitely a sweet spot for us where we feel very much in the groove. And I don't know that that's true for neurotypicals or not because I'm not one. Um, but for the Fast Mind Club, um, we definitely have a sweet spot where we're in the groove. And we can learn to navigate that pretty well. And though we're not saying it's, you know, anyone's responsibility to sort of land us in that sweet, sweet spot. Um, it certainly helps when the educator is aware of executive functioning issues, not just for us, but also those in the autism spectrum and any other learning differences. It can really, you know, it just feels good when somebody gets it, you know, how, okay, how can I get you back? How can I reel you back? And with little kids, there are all kinds of little tricks to do with pretending like a plane is landing or depending on the developmental age and stage and all that. Um, but just, just, you know, work with us and bring us back rather than, you know, doing the, the you know, sort of uh, shame game, even if it's subtle. Now, we've got that sweet spot, and just like neurotypicals, we've also got biorhythms, just like anybody else. So, you know, I'm definitely a morning person, even though, of course, my mind is pretty much going the high majority of my waking day. It's going at its, you know, full tilt, full throttle in the morning. And, uh, and one of my kids who's in the Fast Mind Club, she is also going full throttle, though she is definitely a night owl. So just like, just like the NTs or neurotypicals, um, we have to work that in too. That's not really necessarily inherent to the ADHD. That's just how our body rhythm is. So it's important to just, and for once you become, you know, working to being, you know, a teenager and adult, you become aware of your own body rhythm. And that's very important for all of us. So, uh, and the, for the fifth one, understanding that we are driven by an interest-based nervous system and we need stimulation. We, I mean, we all need stimulation, though those in the Fast Mind Club, the ADHDers, we, you know, again, our dopamine-deprived brains are actively seeking out, you know, stimulation the high majority of the day. And we operate best, we are the most motivated when we are interested in something. So, again, I'm on an anti-shame campaign because sometimes people will say things like, Oh, well, sure, wouldn't everybody like to be interested in something to have to do it? Or, you know, well, just like a little four-year-old, got to be interested to do something. And why don't you just grow up? And what's the matter with you, Peter Pan? You know, rah, rah, rah. and, you know, the judges can just, you know, go to their judger place, their judger planet, preferably. You know, they can all stay together and judge each other. Um, but, you know, we can't help, you know, how we're wired with this interest-based nervous system any more than we can help you know, having brown eyes or, you know, being five foot tall or six foot tall or, you know, left-handed. or I mean, it's just we're, you're born how you're born. It's just how it is. And also for educators, um, you know, the uh, teachers from preschool on up and also professors in higher ed, it's it, obviously it's best not to take things personally. I mean, in general, in life in general, uh, you know, because, you know, 90 plus percent of what anyone says to us is about them and not us because we're obviously, you know, the 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 authors of our own script I and mean, that goes without saying though as a professional adult is even more important right so if a, if it if a you know a first year in college is looking bored to have to, to kind of you know use this awareness of it could be an executive functioning thing at the college level it could be they're adjusting it could be not very deep at all it could be They've had about 45 seconds sleep for a week straight because it's, it's exciting to get to college and they haven't slept. They've been, you know, um, you know, living on Red Bull. It can be all kinds of things, but certainly not to take it personally. It doesn't mean what you're saying in your class is boring. Also true if you're teaching, you know, teaching first grade, third grade, seventh grade, not to take it personally. It's very, very important. Um, you know, and kind of to just loosen up a bit, you know, loosen up and, you know, I'll tell you, I do all kinds of activities in my class, too. And I, I use humor a lot. And I, I forget who whose work this is. I don't totally forget. I'm pretty sure his last name is Schmidt. And he said, you know, when, you, when we add humor to anything, when you incorporate it right into the, the topic, our, our memory for the t actual topic 
goes up significantly. Don't quote me on the percentage, just significantly. And we can do that with most things. Obviously, some things will, you know, never be funny, like the Holocaust. That's just untouchable, obviously. However, most things can be, you can kind of inject some, some humor, and then it makes the whole topic last. So I'm big on humor. I send funny memes, memes and announcements. Um, uh, I, you know, and there, we have, I have funny stories that usually pertain to the topic, though not always. I might have, you know, we have three goats, Hamlet, Hamlet. King Lear and Caesar, and I've got funny goat stories. So if I see they're starting to fade, I might come up with one of many funny goat stories. Um, and, you know, something like that, because to, you know, to take to take a couple minutes out just to to breathe and and and, and laugh about something. You think, oh no, I'm I you know I can't get off track. I I have a half an hour left. Diligent, diligent, diligent. Well, if you think about if they're zoned out, you're really losing the whole thirty minutes. So if you take out two, you're salvaging twenty eight. You know, that's the half full perspective on that one. And then here's the thing. The Fast Mind Club members, we need to move. And, you know, honest to goodness, it's good for neurotypicals too. Um, it's good for everyone. So, you know, at least uh, my classes at Champlain are an hour and 15 minutes. And so, um, you know, it's it's... It's good to, like, even if they start to, to fade, it's good to get them standing up. Sometimes I do uh, an Okinawan breathing um, exercise. It isn't, I don't even know if it's 60 seconds, honest to goodness. Maybe. Top, tops, if, if I go long, minute and a half. So I often, I sometimes start class that way. Sometimes if it's a sort of stressful time, like it's during midterms or finals, especially in the second semester when it's the winter, so you have the short, dark days and the blustery winds up here in northern Vermont and all that. And I see a glazed look. You know, sometimes I'll have them stand up, and then we, you know, we kind of pull in whatever the preoccupied, preoccupied thought is, and then we breathe it out with this this activity I do. And they're up, and they're moving, and then their blood gets pumping. Sometimes um, I will uh, put on the hokey pokey, middle of class. We could be talking about, you know, whatever we're talking about in Minecraft, and the original version, of course. I get them all in a big circle, and they're apprehensive for like the first 0.3 milliseconds. Before long, they're smiling, and they're looking at each other, and then everybody's in, and they're shaking this and shaking that, and putting their bottom in and their bottom out, and it's great. And then when they sit down, they have energy, and they're smiling, and it's and they're focused, and it's just so good. Um, and, and then you know, I, do, I do other moving, uh, movement ones, too. They're also really fun. And then lastly... As educators, again, uh, you know, from from little to big, as we say, you know, like the three-year-olds in, in pre-K to higher ed in college, um, it's important for us as educators to lead the way. I mean, we still have to role model. I don't care if they're seniors in college; they're still imprinting, you know, on us. Imprinting, um, uh, you know, very Skinner. They're imprinting on us, and also Bandura. Uh, you know, they're kind of you know taking it in how we view learning. And we view learning as, hopefully, if we're doing it, if we're, if we're teaching in, in, uh, at any level, that it's fun and exciting. Kids are born into the world, you know, loving learning until they get ruined somehow. And I don't even know where that even happens. But um, it's, it's fun and exciting. And, and usually by the time they get to me, they're all super grades focused and everything else. And I do understand that. And I'm not saying it's bad to have goals and be looking forward to graduate school and, and you know professional lives and that's all good stuff it's just the actual process you want to shift shift the focus from the outcome to the process simply for the quality of life because we don't want to save happy for later right that's ridiculous and you know that's a that's a formula we have reversed in in the in the u.s and i love my country dearly this is just ass backwards and as sean sean aker would talk about in the happiness advantage one of the books I use in Minecraft you know it's in the states we often think well you know once I become successful I'll be happy it's the exact exact polar opposite once I become happy I become successful so these life minutes in this moment are valuable why because we've all we all we've got so those life minutes in the in the classroom learning what everybody's learning and listening to their classmates and you know seeing interesting things if that you're showing or whatever it is that's all important now who knows if we even be here for graduate school? I'm not trying to be morose. I'm just trying to bring in the point that, you know, to the power of now. It's like a very Eckhart Tolle kind of thing to say. But it, it matters now. So we have to lead the way to to emphasize 
the importance of this moment, the importance of our very valuable life minutes, how much we value learning and how much fun it is, and kind of, you know, destigmatizing, you know, what's what learning's been made into. I, I like to call it the red pen shame, even though, you know, mostly grading is done on online now. Um, when I first started teaching, I used to go around the go around in a circle and say and show a red pen and say, "What does this make you think of?" I've yet all these years heard one positive word about a red pen. It was just、um, bad grades, incorrect, need to redo, F,、um, not smart, never going to be smart, going to drop the class, going to going to not make it, just negative, negative, negative. That's with the red pen, and I actually love to grade. In the old school way, and I just had to not do that during the Rona. But I'm going to go right back to it because I love what my students write. I love to sit in the couch with a glass of wine and a golden retriever, Giovanni, and read them. And I use shade. I use purple and shades of blue and indigo, and write all kinds of positive things. And then the need to work on some reminders about maybe formatting or circle a few typos. But it's all in it's all in pinks and purples and indigos and. Occasional green and green mixed with blue, and it, to try to destigmatize that, and that's that's also metaphorical, because again, the classroom is hopefully like almost like a playground. Like who took the play out of learning? It's ridiculous. Grownups need to play. I need to play. I even have a I even have a remote control fart machine. Everybody should have one. And I've brought I've brought all kinds of、uh, games and and I have games that my office students can sign out and. Uh, it's just so important to play and to and to to role model、um, how excited we are to be there. That is that again, and to and return to the moment and shift our shift our attention to the process rather than the outcome. This is so so important. So this works for your ADHD, -er,、um, whether that's your child、um, or or your student, or you know you want to talk about this with your colleague because you teach and you work with. Kids and young adults,、um, and, and this is about all I can do in this amount of time. There's definitely more, but you know, mainly we, we need the ADHD or needs to learn. Even the little ones need to learn more about how they learn rather than the content. The content will follow if the rest of this is all in place, because it's about、um, really making sure that their working memory is clear. And also that they're feeling good about themselves. So actually, that's one last thing because I meant, didn't mention it. Is I start every one of the classes I teach with a minute of mindfulness. Very, very, very important because we need to clear out the working memory, especially with those who have executive functioning issues, to the best the best we can. Because otherwise, the whole rest of the class is basically our efforts are in vain because not much of anything is getting in. Just how it is. So to clear the working memory. And to help do the best we can to role model the process and help students feel good about themselves, exactly how they are. The, the anti-shame campaign is just huge. We need them to feel good in the classroom, exactly how they are, bringing awareness to how they learn, and shedding all kinds of positivity on these wonderful, very different minds that all have something to bring to the table. That's it. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.